We were just talking about it. Bidenomics. America is seeing strong job growth, falling inflation, and very low unemployment. President Biden says it is his policies that we have to thank for it. Earlier today, I spoke with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen about the president's economic strategy in an exclusive interview. Treasury Secretary Yellen, good to see you again. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, President Biden is out there today talking about Bidenomics and all of the economic wins, and there are many. But the one thing that is holding the American people back from feeling it is inflation. It's obviously getting lower. That's a good thing. But it is still really high. And with the labor market as strong as it is, what do you see as the catalyst to really get inflation down? Well, um, inflation was fed by supply chain bottlenecks from the pandemic and from Putin's brutal war in Ukraine. And the impact of those forces is uh, declining. Um, gas prices have come down $1.40 off their highs. That's important to Americans. Actually, inflation year over year has come down for 11 months in a row. Um, and is now down by about 5 percent. Granted, it remains too high. And the labor market is strong. But in part, we're seeing uh, the strong job market is attracting more people into it. So um, some easing is coming from uh, additional participation in the labor market. And headline growth in the economy has slowed. And that means that firms are reconsidering um, just how many additional workers they need to hire. And a little bit of reduced uh, pressure from firms that have such ambitious hiring plans is taking some of the heat out of competition in the labor market. So wage increases remain very solid, but they've come down off their highs, and that'll be a factor that will tend to reduce inflation over time. As part of Bidenomics, the president is keen to have corporations and wealthy Americans pay their fair share. It makes sense in theory. But given that House Republicans want to see more tax cuts, and we still haven't even closed the carried interest loophole, do you really think that raising taxes is going to happen? Well. Um, I think it's important that we do pay for the investments that are really important to enable this economy to grow. And, you know, we've had decades of um, trickle-down economics um, in which it was thought that tax cuts, and I'd certainly include the JCTA, the Republican passed bill, as exemplifying a trickle-down approach. Um, it didn't succeed in stimulating investment or creating jobs. Um, it resulted in much larger blowing a hole in the deficits and um, really led to the rich getting richer and a less fair society. And President Biden has put many ideas on the table um, that can result in the funds we need to invest in our economy to um, help the middle class, as President Biden likes to say, grow the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, um, tax ideas that will improve fairness and um, cut deficits and um, provide funds to invest in the economy. One crack in our economy right now is in commercial real estate, specifically office buildings around the country are sitting empty. The owners are turning the keys in, walking away from the buildings. And this is a problem. Banks could see huge losses, and that could impact consumers. How worried are you about this? Well, it's something that we're monitoring very closely and trying to assess just how significant it is. Um, some of the greatest exposure among banks is among community banks with um, very high concentrations um, in commercial real estate. My best judgment, this is not likely to be a systemic issue, but there are some banks that 
um, are likely to be exposed. You're expected to travel to China next month. How do you see the future of our economic relationship with China? And where do Bidenomics fit into that? Well, I do hope to travel to China. Um, I don't have anything specific for you right now on the timing. And what I've tried to make clear is that the United States um, is taking actions and will continue to take actions intended to protect our national security interest. And we'll do that even if it has imposes some economic cost on us. But we believe that a healthy economic relationship, healthy competition that uh, benefits both um, American businesses and workers and Chinese businesses and workers. This is something that is possible and desirable that we really welcome and want to um, have a healthy economic relationship, and we think it's generally beneficial. Uh, we have disagreements. Uh, my hope in traveling to China is to reestablish contact. There are a new group of leaders. We need to get to know one another. I'm out of time, but before we go, I just wanted to ask, is artificial intelligence on your mind? Everybody's talking about it, whether that it's the greatest new transformative technology or a really scary thing coming down the pike that's going to wipe out jobs. How do you see it? Well, I think artificial intelligence um, is something that will have very major effects on our economy. It clearly is an innovation that will um, have important positive effects in many areas and um, speed innovation and aid productivity. But there are clearly risks that I think have been well identified. And President Biden has asked his team to look very carefully at those risks, assess them, and consider what policy steps could be important to make sure that we reap the benefits and control the costs.